I want to read a passage of Scripture from the book of Philippians today. Chapter 4, verse 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. That sounds like a good thing today. This is uh, the, the Thursday or the, the Sunday before Thanksgiving. And so we're going to be talking about Thanksgiving today. Um, it's good to see you all here. I'm klutz today. I need all the things I can get, right? Let's go to the Lord for a word of prayer. Lord, when our eyes open today, you were there. When we took in our breath, even before we had wakened, your wind was in that breath. Today, when we ate our breakfast, you gave us that food. And as we are here this morning, you are here in this place. Promising that whenever two or more are gathered in your name, that you are there in our midst. Thank you, dear Lord, for who you are, for what you've done in Jesus Christ, for how you purchased our sins and have healed our sickness and have brought us to this time and this place Create in us, dear Lord, a heart to know you better. And fill the void in our lives with your love. In Jesus' name, we pray all of these things. Amen. Let's go to the Lord right now. Gracious God and Father, we come to you, Lord, today, and we realize that we come to a God who hears. We do not come to a stick or a stone that cannot move itself or heed or hear or pay attention. You are God. And you have all power. You have all knowledge. And you're present at all times and in all seasons and every place from the farthest reaches of our galaxy to the depths of the sea and from sea to shining sea and shore to shore. We come to you, Lord, today. We bring to you our petitions right now here, Lord, today. We pray for those that are going to be traveling during this week that you would give them safety and traveling mercies. We pray for those, dear Lord, today who have problems with their sugar and their diabetes and keeping everything under control. For those who need a job, we pray, dear Lord, for those that have lost loved ones and we pray, dear Lord, even for this cat. And we pray for the meds that uh, Kathy needs. Lord, we pray for the knee that has been injured. And uh, we pray that that knee would heal. Lord, we just pray that as the prayers are offered today, that you would answer. That you would answer with power. That you would answer with, with your comfort. That you would answer with your wisdom. In Jesus' name, we pray all these things. Amen.
This passage of scripture, the 100th Psalm. I'm reading from the uh, King James Version today because that's how I learned it. And uh, because it seems like this is a, just a special way of letting us know how we are to Give thanks today. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all he lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. This passage hits us in a very special way. A week ago on Saturday I had a, uh, a training in Greenwood by our region staff called Table Talk. It's amazing to me how many times God's people would celebrate around a table. The Old Testament, all of the feasts, Passover was a feast. And, and um, First Fruits was a feast. The Pentecost was a feast was a celebration around a table with family and worshipers of God. In the New Testament, Jesus often, it says he was at a table. And Jesus takes this idea of a table and he turns it upside down. He has a table with Zacchaeus. He has a table with Levi, who were outcasts. In fact, it earned him a reputation, a friend of tax gatherers and sinners, a glutton and a drunkard. Jesus would celebrate with people around a table. Now I want you to think about your table this morning, where you're going to be gathering for Thanksgiving. Maybe it'll be at a restaurant. 
Maybe it'll be at one of your houses. Or maybe you'll travel to somebody else's house. But around that table, there's people that are family. And I'm thinking about this a lot lately because, quite frankly, my wife's been going through all of the photographs that my mom has taken for years. We're talking trunks and totes of photographs. Trying to separate them and give them to the various people that belongs. The photographs of people that have gathered at our Thanksgiving table. My grandparents, Louie and Edna, that started the tradition every Thanksgiving noon. And then Louie's sisters, Katie, May, and Marie, who also would come. And then after Louie and Edna had got to be up in years, they literally sold the house to Elsie, their daughter, and she began to host. Well, Mama was still around, but, you know. And so she would have the meal. For 60 years, we met at the same location. And around our table, everybody had a place. We had these little pilgrims that would indicate where you were supposed to sit. And everybody had, by name, a place at the table. And would bring the items and pass them, you know, the, the corn and the green beans. If you didn't eat breakfast today, I'm so sorry. <laughs> We're going to talk about food, table talk. And memories. My uncle. I don't think my grandmother ever liked my uncle very well. In fact, he made the comment to my mother, who also married into the family years ago, and she told him, I'm so glad you joined because now Grandma don't pick on me all the time. Bill could never do anything right. Didn't matter what he did, it was wrong. If he was carving the turkey or mashing the potatoes, he was doing it wrong, or he was in the way. Or if he was in the other room trying to stay out of the way, he was watching football and he was not helping out his wife with a Thanksgiving event. And there was, one, there was one year he came through, he had a bowl of peas. This was one year he decided to really get into things. He had this bowl of peas. Grandma had this big purse. You could hide a sink in that purse. It had all of her cosmetics. It has all of the tweezers and things for her getting herself the ready. It had all the toys for the grandkids that they would come. It had all everything. And he tripped and he dumped the whole bowl of peas in that purse. And he had this look that says, I'm going to die. And Grandma said, my purse! And my brother, who's the comedian in our family, said, quick, add some corn and green beans, we'll call it succotash. <laughs> I don't think Bill ever lived it down, and we didn't let him. <laughs> Here's the thing. Photographs and memories. Bill passed away six, seven years ago. My aunt passed away last December. My mom in July. My dad. Grandparents. Katie, May, and Marie. In fact, the house is kind of dark. Nobody's even living there. They're all going through the estate thing and our tradition has changed. So my question today about thanks is maybe we need to expand what it means to have gratitude to God. 
more than a season, more than a day on the calendar, something that will affect our lives. So today, I think it's important for us to give thanks joyfully. That's what this psalm says. Make a joyful noise in the Lord all you lands. Joyful. Now when it comes for thanksgiving, what we normally do is we sort of tally up the pluses and the minuses in our lives. The minuses being those that have passed away. The minuses of those that maybe marriages that have dissolved or relationships that have been stressed or strained, jobs that have been lost, maybe businesses lost, maybe farms lost, maybe investments lost. Or we may tally up the good things too. You know the marriages. Somebody that's new that marries into the family. Or a new child that is born. Or a, a raise or a surprise uh, windfall that the family gets. Something that's good. And we sort of tally them up to see where we are on the blessing scale with God. Be joyful. Give thanks joyfully. Because sometimes things just, they're all apart. Think about Florida and the hurricanes that they had. Puerto Rico. Forest fires. Ukraine. Their lives are blown apart. I think about Israel in the time that the Babylonians came. They killed. They murdered. They looted. They carried off all of the treasures to Babylon. And those that were left, they marched off by spear to the four corners of the earth to integrate them into the various other races among other nations. And the poorest of the poor were left there to raise the vineyards and to farm the crops and to manage the herds and to pay the taxes. Occupants. They had custodians of Babylon. And when everything was in ruins, their freedoms were gone, the temple was destroyed, their faith was disaster. Lamentations 3 says, Your loving kindness is everlasting. Your sustaining love, it's new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. When everything is blown apart by disaster, by, by war, by grief, by stress, by political strife, great is thy faithfulness. Give thanks joyfully. Give thanks actively. Give thanks actively. Serve the Lord with gladness. Verse 2 says, come before his presence with singing. Worship. Worship is a whole body experience. Heart Soul, mind, dancing, shouting, singing, instruments. If you read Psalm 150, you realize worship in the temple was all about a celebration. Give thanks. Let all the earth give thanks to the Lord. With timbrels on dancing, let's give thanks. With trumpet sound, give thanks. With timbrels and lyres and stringed instruments, with loud crashing cymbals, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. It's active. 
Not all of us sing. Some of us can't carry a tune in a bucket. But worship is more than just what we do on Sunday morning. It's what we do to honor God all the days of our lives. We receive gifts from God. Maybe we can't sing. Maybe we can't play an instrument. Maybe we can't preach a sermon. But we can keep a checkbook. We can organize. We can make a quiet visit to somebody that's going through a rough time and be there to listen to them. Maybe we are a helper. We just do things. We just clean up the church after communion and quietly go through and make sure everything, all the lights are off or on or decorate the sanctuary. It's the gifts that we've been given. And then we make other gifts. Norman Wallace, who was the pastor at Waldron Baptist Church, he did an experience with his church a couple of years running. In the fall of the year, they would have what they called Mission Sunday. When the offering plate was passed, you could put into that offering plate what you were going to give to missions over and above for the entire year. Or you could take out of the offering plates. Now, you put an IOU in there so you knew how, how much you were taken out and they, they knew how much had been collected. But then you took maybe $5. And if you were a seamstress, you took and you bought thread or you bought a pillowcase and you made a beautiful handmade pillowcase out of your gifts. If you were a wood worker, you took and you uh, maybe made a birdhouse or a bird feeder. If you uh, made beautiful quilts, you took maybe $25. You could bought a bunch of scraps and you made a beautiful quilt. And then on the Saturday before Thanksgiving, they had a huge church bazaar where people could come in. And the $5 Stitching arrangement that you did, maybe it would bring $25. Maybe that birdhouse will bring $50. Maybe that, maybe that quilt would bring $150 or $300. And that used to funnel their, their mission budget for the entire year. Use your gifts. Take something, expand it, see what God does with it. It's just a thought. But here's the deal. Give thanks actively. Use your gift actively as an honor to God. Give thanks reverently. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It's he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. We worship him reverently because he is our shepherd. You see, once we were lost. Once we were lost. Ever been lost before? Got separated from the parents in a department store. Driving a car, didn't know how to get back home. Go walking in the woods, don't know how to get out. It's a horrible thing to look up and not know where you're at. I remember a story of a guy, 12 years old, walking along a railroad track. The son of an Irishman that every day he would drink. And when he woke up, he'd beat the kids. And in the morning he'd wake up and he would cry and he would wipe their wounds and by the next day, he was drinking again. Drinking, beating, weeping because of the desecration of what he did. But anyway, this boy was walking along the railroad. And he said he could see 
People coming home from work, see them gathering as a family, coming in, lights coming on, he could smell the food that they were fixing. And he said he realized nobody in the world knew where he was because he'd run away from home. And nobody cared. Isaiah 53, 6 says, All we like sheep have gone astray. Each one of us has gone their own way. I'm here to tell you, you may be lost, but Jesus calls you by name. He has called you by name. He knows where you're at. He knows what you've done. And he calls you when you're lost. And now you're found. John 10, verse 10 says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus died on a cross. Because he was, even though he was perfect, he died. He paid the price for your sins and mine. He says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Jesus speaks. He calls us by name. We come to him and he hears us. we hear him and he hears us. So we worship him, we give thanks reverently. And we give thanks sacrificially. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, verse 4 says, and enter his courts with praise. His court. We need to realize when we talk about courts, we're talking about an old copy. The old tabernacle in the wilderness, something that the Israelites carried around with them for 40 years in the wilderness, was an old copy. It was an old copy. Hebrews 10 tells us a copy of heaven with very specific instructions of how Moses was to construct it. And later on, Solomon that constructed the temple, it was a series of courts. The courtyard, there was an outward courtyard, that's where people came that were Gentiles. That's also where they brought the animals that were for the sacrifice. So there would be oxen, and sheep, and goats, and pigeons, and doves, and coins. See, it was, it was in this outward courtyard that Jesus cleansed when he was on earth. It was that outer courtyard which was the only place a Gentile could have a prayer. But he said, my house should be called a house of prayer. You've made it a den of robbers. You've profited at the expense of these Gentiles. They can't even have a prayer in my outer courtyard. The next courtyard was the court of the women or the treasury. This is where you would come to give your, your gifts. It's where Mary went to give her gifts so that she could be reinstated as a worshiper after Jesus was born. After the allotted time. It's where the poor widow came and put in her two copper coins and Jesus commanded her saying, she has put in more than all the rest of you everything she had to live on. The courtyard of the men, that's where, that's where things happen, you see. Women couldn't be a part of that. Men could, nah, women, women could give their gifts. They just couldn't worship. It was the men that brought the offerings, that brought the sheep, that brought the oxen, that brought the goats, that brought the cereal offerings, that brought the things that were received by the priests and taken to the holy place, where the holy place where it was placed on an altar and burned or taken away. That was for the relationship. And then there was the most holy place where God was supposed to be blocked by the, the curtain because he was holy. Only the high priest could enter once a year with blood, 
for the atonement of not only himself, but the entire community. The old copy. The new copy is Jesus. He is the temple. Not built with hands. See, when Paul the Apostle reminds us he has made everything in peace. There is no longer Jew nor Gentile. There is no longer slave nor free man. There is no longer, no longer male or female. You're all one in Christ Jesus. Anybody can come to offer their offer, their sacrifice, their sacrifice of thanksgiving. Give thanks joyfully. Give thanks actively. Give thanks reverently. Give thanks sacrificially. Maybe we need a shift. Maybe we need to give thanks unceasingly. For the Lord is good, verse 5 says. His mercy is everlasting. His truth, it endures through all generations. Is Thanksgiving just a rotation? You know how it is, marketer. You, 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 you've, seen the mar you've seen Walmart. You've seen the grocery stores, how they advertise for things year-round. And we get to Halloween, and you've got all these pumpkins. And then, before Halloween is over, or right after it's over, you suddenly have pumpkins that are exchanged for pine cones, pine trees, Christmas trees, full-fledged. And you go from the scary things to Santa Claus. And sandwich in the middle is Thanksgiving. Just only just a blurb in the whirliness of things, of scary things, and of Santa things. Here's the thing. God gave manna in the Old Testament for a season to nourish his people physically. Maybe thanks is about a relationship where by faith we walk with Jesus every day. And he walks with us from the here and now. Every struggle, every problem, every disease, every blessing until we meet him in heaven. We need to expand what it means to give gratitude to God. I love how Andre Crouch tells it in his masterpiece, My Tribute. How can I say thanks for the things you've done for me? Things so undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love to me. The joy of a million angels cannot express my gratitude. All that I am and ever hope to be, I owe it all to thee. To God be the glory for great things he has done. With his blood, he has cleansed me. With his power, he has raised me to God. Be the glory. Great things he has done. So let's make it our goal this week. Not just for the day Thanksgiving. But let's make it a season that ex expands our 365 day walk with Jesus. Here's the thing. Anything that happens to us, 
anything, good, bad, whatever, we pray about it. We give thanks on what it might mean for us down the road. And we see what the Lord does with it. Let's pray. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks we give to the Holy One. Give thanks for God you gave Jesus your Son. And so let the weak say, I'm strong, let the poor say, I'm rich because what the Lord has done for me. Amen. Let's sing today our song of decision. Whatever your decision is, whether it's to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, you've heard His voice, you want to come and make Him the shepherd of your life. Maybe it's a renewal of some kind who pay more attention to the relationship you have with Him, be giving Him thanks for the things that happen. Whatever the decision is today, Let's sing together. Let's listen. Let's do what the Spirit in invites us to do. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. Take thy cross and follow, follow me. He needs me, I will follow. Where he needs me, I will follow. Where he needs me, I will follow. I'll go with him, with him, all the way. I'll go with him through the garden. I'll go with him through the garden. I'll go with him through the garden. I'll go with him, with him, all the way. He needs me, I will follow. Where he needs me, I will follow. He needs me, I will follow. I'll go with him, with him. All the way, I'll go with him through the judgment. I'll go with him through the judgment. I'll go with him through the judgment. I'll go with him, with him, all the way. He where he needs me I will follow where he needs me I will follow I'll go with him with him all the way go with him Go with him. 
all the way. We give thanks for this time, for this worship. Lord, we look up to you as you look down on our world. And in another wonderful song, you have the whole world in your hands. Help us to be watchful this week. To pray to you about everything. Giving thanks. And just keep a, a watch on what you're doing in our lives. In a relationship that is a walk day by day. Amen.